Lewis Barker, Riley's husband, said he had brief conversations with her while she was barricaded in the room for nearly three hours. She told me she was hit multiple times by a guy in a dress. I was shaking. It made me that mad. It makes me sick to feel so helpless about it, Barker said. She was under police protection and was still hit by a man wearing a dress. On Twitter, Gaines shared footage she took showing her being rushed out of the venue by police officers amid an onslaught of verbal attacks from the detractors who surrounded her. I was ambushed and physically hit twice by a man. This is proof that women need sex-protected spaces. Still only further assures me I'm doing something right. When they want you silent, speak louder. This will not stop Riley from boldly educating people of the dangers of biological males in women's sports. She will continue to speak the truth against the radical left that no longer understands the difference between men and women. Leah Thomas is not a brave, courageous woman who earned a national title. He is an arrogant cheat who stole a national title from a hard-working, deserving woman. The NCAA is responsible. If I was a working woman at ESPN, I would walk out. Yes, spineless ESPN. I think shows how people are becoming more bold. People are starting to open their eyes to what this gender ideology propaganda being pushed by the left, being pushed by the media, being pushed within education systems, they're opening their eyes to how harmful this is, specifically, of course, to women and to children. Now, in your tweet, you suggested that wo people, women working at ESPN should walk out. Have you heard anything from ESPN? I have not, which is of no surprise to me. I will say I admire Sage Steele, who works at ESPN. Um, of course, she is a, a real female. I admire her so much because she has taken a public stance on this. Um, of course, working around sports, we know the advantages that men have in comparison to women when we're comparing things that require athleticism or sheer strength. And Sage has been the only woman working at ESPN to publicly acknowledge that, and so I admire her for her courageousness and her strength. As we go forward here, various solutions have been proposed. How about a separate category for trans athletes compete amongst themselves? Female athletes, male athletes, trans athletes. What do you say to that? You know, I think in, a, in an ideal world, um, in terms of finances and in terms of the amount of people actually playing in this division and people watching this, I think this is a perfect solution. A lot of people will, of course, look at this as something that's segregatory and we're isolating the trans community. Mm -hmm. But from my perspective, we're embracing the trans community. Five years ago, if you would have suggested a trans category, people would have laughed in your face. But now we're acknowledging these people do, in fact, exist um, and giving them a space to compete fairly, safely, which is what we all want. That's what I want and that's what the women that's what we deserve. So to you, it's, a, it's an issue of fairness. That's it. It's not discrimination, not inclusion or exclusion. It's basic fairness. That's it? Absolutely. That's the whole argument. My argument, of course, in regards to this whole issue, especially the Leah Thomas scenario, this was a male swimmer, a mediocre male swimmer who was ranked 462nd nationally at best amongst the men, has now transitioned to a woman, and of course, naturally, trails the women, dominates the women's field. How are we not seeing the blatant discrimination that we are facing on the basis of sex, which is of course what everything Title IX was created to protect. We are, as women, dis being discriminated on the basis of sex.